Reverend Dr. Sarah Williams. I'm an associate minister here at First Central Baptist Church, and my pastor is Reverend Dr. Demetrius S. Carolina. We are so happy that you join us today for a word from God. My scripture is coming from James, the first chapter, verses 17 and 18. Every good gift and every perfect gift are from above and cometh down from the Father of light, with whom is not very vulnerable, neither shadow of turning of his own will beget he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creation. This morning I want to talk to you about why 12 days of Christmas? Why 12 days of Christmas? We are all familiar with the Christmas song, the 12 days of Christmas. The most is, it is a delightful nonsense rhyme set to music, but it has had a quite serious purpose when it was written. See, it is a good deal more than just a repetitious melody with pretty phrases and a list of strange gifts. Christians in England during the period of 1558 to 1829, when Parliament finally emancipated Christians in England, see, Christians were prohibited from any practice of their faith by law, and they couldn't practice in private nor in public. See, it was a crime to be a Christian. The 12 days of Christmas was written in England as one of the catechism songs to help young Christians learn the tense of their faith. It was like a memory aid. When, when you was caught with anything in writing, including adhesive to the Christian faith, could not only get you in prison, but it could get you hanged, it could get you drowned, and it could get you quartered. See, a rather peculiar and ghastly punishment. The songs, gifts, a hidden meanings of the teaching of the faith. You see, the true love mentioned in the song does not refer to an earthly person. It refers to God himself. The, the me who received the presence refer to every baptized person. And the portraits in a pear tree was Jesus Christ, the Son of God. See, in the song, the Christ is symbolically presented as a partridge, which frets injury to the core predators from her helpless siblings. And see, much in memory of the expression of Christ, sadness over the fate of Jerusalem. It says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often would I have sheltered thee under my wings as a hen does her chicks, but thou would not have it so. See, for over 300 years, the, ex the free expression of Christians living was not allowed. Christian parents uh, during this time was trying to come up with a way that they could still teach their children the basic doctrines of the Bible. See, they came up with the idea to use secret Christian symbols through the literates of a song. So why 12 days of Christmas? Christmas was first on January the 6th, and then it was changed to December the 25th. And there are 12 days after December the 25th, the new Christmas, and January the 6th, the old Christmas. You see, my true love referred to God. And see, the tradition, 12 days of Christian, Christmas, the traditional 12 days of Christmas are not the days before Christmas, but the days after the period of, of Christian theology that makes the span between the birth of Christ and the coming of the three wise men. 
So see, now we are within those 12 days between December the 25th and January the 6th. So the January the 6th, between December the 25th and January the 6th is the epiphany sometime called the Three King Days. So the song says, on the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. The partridge is the symbol of Jesus and the pear tree is the symbol of the cross. You see, John 3, 16 tells us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have an everlasting life. You see, a partridge was known as a valiant bird and willing to fight to the death in order to defend it young. You see, Jesus was fighting for you and he was fighting for me and he carried that heavy cross up Golgotha's hill. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two turtle doves. The two turtle doves represent the Old and the New Testament. In these two testaments, God reveals himself to a lost world, and all through the Bible, he shows us who, is the, who he is in the word of God. The word of God says when we are lonely, he sticks closer than a brother. He is a very present help in the time of troubles. And when we are sick, he is the God that heals us. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the first and the last. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lord. He is the Rose of Sharon. He is the bright and morning star. He's a wonderful counselor, the Prince of Peace, the everlasting Father. I tell you, he is my closest friend. On the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me three French hens. He gave me faith, hope and charity. These are the principal theologian virtues. On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me four calling birds. Uh, the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which proclaims the good news of God, reconciliation of the world to himself in Jesus Christ. Uh, on the fifth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me five golden rings, uh, the five books, of uh, first books of the Old Testament called the Torah, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, which gives the history of humanity, the sin for failure, and God's response of grace in the creation of a people to be a light to the world. On the sixth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me six geese a lay in the six days of the creation that confess that God as creator and sustainer of the world. On the seventh day of Christmas, my true love gave to me seven swans a swimming, uh, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, minister, teaching, exhortation, giving, leading, and compassion. On the eighth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me eight maids of milking, the eight B attitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who moan. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteous sake. On the ninth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me nine ladies dancing, the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control on the 10th 
day of Christmas. My true love gave to me uh, ten laws a leaping, uh, the ten commandments. Uh, you shall have no other God before me. Uh, do not make an idol. Do not take God's name in vain. Uh, remember the Sabbath day. Uh, honor thy mother and thy father. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, uh, do not covet uh, on the eleventh day of Christmas. Uh, my true love uh, gave to me uh, eleven pipers piping, uh, the eleven faithful apostles, uh, Simon Peter, Andrew James, John Philip, uh, Bartholomew, uh, Matthew and Thomas, uh, Jane Barafratus, uh, Simon the Zealot, uh, Judas, Boss James. Uh, the list does not include Judas Iscariot uh, because uh, he betrayed Jesus uh, to the religious leaders and the Romans uh, on the 12th day of Christmas uh, my true love gave to me uh, 12 drummers drumming uh, the 12 points of the doctrine uh, in the Apostle Creed. Uh, I believe uh, in God the Father Almighty uh, creator of heaven and earth uh, I believe uh, in Jesus uh, his only son our Lord uh, he was conceived uh, by the Holy Spirit uh, and born of a virgin Mary, uh, he suffered under uh, Pontius Pilate, uh, was crucified and was buried. Uh, he descended uh, into hell, uh, and on the third day, uh, he rose again. Uh, he ascended into heaven uh, and is seated at uh, the right hand of the Father. He will come again uh, to judge the living. Uh, and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Now you have uh, the 12 days of Christmas, uh, 12 drummers drumming, uh, 11 pipers piping, 10 lords a leaping, uh, eight, 9 ladies dancing, uh, 8 maids a milking, 7 swans a swimming, uh, 6 geese is laying, 5 golden rings, uh, 4 calling birds, uh, 3 French hens, 2 turtle ducks, uh, and a partridge in a pear tree, our Lord, our Savior, who died on the cross just for you and for me. Amen. Blessed Worship Day. Christians around the world understand the importance of reflecting and memorializing the sacrifice of Jesus toward us, how he gave his life for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Communion is our moment as Christians, those who've accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, to reflect and to rem remember uh, how he died and won our salvation. Corinthians tells us that every time we come to this moment of worship, that we need to stop and reflect, that we should pray, pray for forgiveness, and that we should understand that it is important that we do not approach this worship experience having any type of ill feelings or, or segmented relationships and fellowships with one another, but that we need to forgive and be forgiven because that's what God died for, for our forgiveness, the forgiveness of our, the forgiveness of our sins. So let's pause for a moment now and pray. Dear Lord, we come believing you, thanking you for your son and thanking your son for giving us the Holy Spirit that leads and guides us to all truth. We ask you to forgive us of our sins. Wash us, make us one with you. Forgive those who've sinned against us so that together we can live a life of victory and peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus, the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it and gave it to his disciples. And he explained to them that this was my body that was broken for you. That uh, as often as you eat this, you do remember me 
They didn't understand what he was talking about because he had not yet gone to the cross. And in the same manner, he took the wine, the, the cup, and he poured it from one to the, the next and told them that I'm going to give my blood for you. You do know that it is required, a sacrifice is required. Time and eternity has always required a sacrifice for our sins. And so because we are not perfect beings, we are imperfect. Jesus is the perfect sacrifice for us. The Bible says by one man sin entered the world, but by that second Adam, forgiveness of sins. Thank God for that second Adam who is Jesus. And so today, all around the world, we come to memorialize, reflect, and to remember Jesus as Lord. We know we're not physically in the same place, but wherever you are, join with me. First, his body. This bread represents his sacrifice, his body that was given for us. Family, believers, let us eat, eat, eat all of it. This cup represents his sacrifice, represents his blood that he shed for, on Calvary for us. Drink, drink ye all of it. Thank you, Lord. We celebrate. It was sorrowful that he had to die, but we celebrate the fact that only he could do it and that he had the audacity, the courage to die for us. No greater love knows any man than this, that a man lays down his life for a friend. We are the friends of God. Amen. Thank God for Jesus, and thank you, Jesus, for your Holy Spirit. Family, we love you. God bless you.